So as a designer, what is the difference between a tuck and a pleat? So are tucks. Tucks are also intentional. They're constructed exactly the same. They're both like a knife pleat what or a box pleat. They both have visual aspects. One is sewn shut and the other one is left open to expand. And usually on a tuck, you sew it shut on the fold line. So whatever distance your pleat is, sticks out away from the fabric, but it doesn't expand. It just becomes a three-dimensional texture. So I tend to not like my tucks very big. Uh, pin tucks are anything an eighth of an inch or, or a quarter of an inch and smaller. And a regular tuck is anything bigger than that. I tend to not like tucks as a general rule because then it just adds volume in places where I don't necessarily want volume. And if I was going to do that, I'd rather have a pleat that moves and shifts. However, especially in the outdoor industry, and you'll see this a lot of times in women's leggings, the trendy thing right now are the pin tucks across the thigh, across the knee to articulate. It just gives it the bumpy texture, just those little stitch lines. Those are pin tucks. So that's what we're accomplishing, except for we're not doing pin tucks. They're not teeny tiny. We're doing regular tucks. Okay. So on our aesthetic, crap nuggets, you can see what that we have the three-dimensional texture up in the yoke. We are going to have a style line across the top of the bodice. That is the yoke. And since you're cutting it off and um, sewing it back on, then it becomes a style line. It works really well for color blocking, uh, for shaping, especially in the upper shoulder blades in the back. Putting a yoke on the back of a shirt works out really well. But you can use it as a style line in the front. And then we are going to do tucks in the upper part. So I would choose a bodice. You can do male or female. I don't care which one you do. I do female all the time, not because I am a female body, but because it just takes less paper and wastes less paper for me, not for any other reason. Um, as you can see, if we're doing it in the front, then nothing we do in that yoke is going to be affected by any of the darts, waist or bust. So I don't care if you're using the sloper that has a single waist start or if it has the waist and the bust start, that's not going to matter. And you are going to start, we're using the slash method, which means you are going to start by tracing the entire sloper. So go ahead and do that part first. Yes, you can use that one or you can use this one. Like I said, it's not gonna matter. What will matter is that it changes your aesthetic in your glossary. So on your glossary pages at the top, you need to decide what your aesthetics are that you're working with, how your pattern is gonna look when it's complete. And I'm like, I don't necessarily want to draw it on here because I don't have a pencil and I want to be able to erase it. And I obviously don't believe in pencils. So I'll use a suction pen so I can erase it right out of my book. So this one right here only has the waist darts coming in here like this. So this is what I would show as my completed piece. If I were using the bodice piece you had, I would also have a style line coming in this way and in this way for those bust starts. And it just changes a little bit of the aesthetic in here. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's all it changes is the aesthetic on the outside. 
And so this picture for you would change if you use a sloper that is different than I am doing. What happens if you decide to cut two, then you have a style line up the front? What happens if you're putting in a totally um, separating closure buttons all the way up the front, then you'd have a placket up the front and you'd have buttons all the way up the front. And you can choose those aesthetics as a designer. That's your choice. You don't have to do it exactly like I do it. Okie dokie. All right, so I'm gonna trace out my sloper. My slopers are getting really sad. Good thing I have like 12 sets. I do need to know where my bust line is, which means I'm gonna wanna know where my bust point is at some, some stage of this game. I'm gonna take the sloper off. Now, I need to know where my bust line is, but that doesn't mean that's where I want the style line to do, to be. So you need to think about the mechanics of the body. Think about your mannequin. And if you're gonna have a style line cutting straight horizontally across the body, where do you want that to be? You don't want it at bust line. We know that. I don't think we'd want it below bust line. I don't think the pin tucks would look good doing that. Um, probably somewhere up above. So you would want to know kind of from the hollow of the neck, how far down you want that line to be. And that's pretty arbitrary as a designer. So if I want it to be somewhere in here, then I'm just gonna make sure that I am perpendicular with my center front. And I'm just gonna put that line in wherever I decide that it's gonna be. Then we're gonna um, slash these two pieces apart. So they become two independent working pattern pieces. This pattern piece will be complete other than notches for how to attach the pleats back up here for alignment. And so you need to think about what your pleats are gonna be like so we can put the notches on, but you can put the notches on after. So I'm just going to cut this part and this part, I'm gonna cut them out and I'm gonna cut them completely separate. This piece is gonna to get totally reworked and look foreign to anything that it looks like now. This piece is complete as is, other than seam allowance. So you could seam allowance the bottom part before you cut it and then add a piece of paper up here at the top to be able to seam allowance that. That's probably the easiest way instead of cutting it out completely and then tracing it again and adding more seam allowance or whatever else. So you can do that. I am going to wait because I am going to think about my pleats first and I'm going to mark it while it's still attached so I can do it all in one movement. If you think about the top of a tuxedo, think about how this is sitting. Think about how these pleats are gonna fold or how these tucks are gonna fold. I'm actually gonna have my center front be flat and I'm gonna offset from the center front to my first tuck and I'm going to have, oh, three, three tucks to either side and I want them to be pretty equidistant. And I think I'm gonna do quarter inch tucks because we're working in half scale. Everybody with my math so far? So if I want them to be offset from the front, that means I'm probably gonna have my first tuck be half inch from the front. So I'm just gonna draw a line, making sure that my ruler is parallel to the center front. And I'm gonna draw it all the way through the top part and just mark it slightly below that line that I drew because there's my first notch placement. Is that better? Then how far is my other notch gonna be? Well, you know, I think I'd probably measure how long this span is that I'm working with to start with. And I've got three and a half inches and I've used half an inch. So I've got three inches left. So if I put one tuck at this two 
at this one inch mark and one tuck at this two at this mark. Does that make sense? I'm going to draw that all the way up, extend it slightly below, keeping it perpendicular to the yoke line and parallel to the center front. Now I know where my, where my tucks are going to go. At this point, I've just notched the bottom piece. I've marked my placement lines on the top piece. I am going to label these A, B, C, and D. Just so I can keep track of which one's which, which is the right side, which is the wrong side, because we're gonna cut everything. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm gonna cut across my yoke line. I'm gonna label this bottom piece. It's gonna be the bodice. Um, the bodice front, this will be the yoke, the bodice yoke front. My center front is here. You can still put in your bust line, whatever labeling, other than seam allowance right here at the top, this piece can be complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And then I'm gonna go get myself a different pen because this one is gonna smear all over everywhere and it's making me a bit crazy. So I would just put a little piece of paper back in behind here. Tape that on. Recut cut across the top, whatever seam allowance I'm using. True up the bottom. And that piece is finished. Does that make sense? Oi, smeary everywhere. All over my ruler. Enough to make a person crazy. And this would be the bodice front. Now notice I didn't seam allowance it down this side. And that's because right down the center front, if I'm thinking about my aesthetic, I'm gonna want that on the fold. That makes sense? Okay, then we can put that piece aside. We're gonna take this piece, I'm gonna finish cutting out this. I'm not gonna seam allowance it, I'm just gonna cut it straight as it is, and then I'm gonna cut each one of these chunks completely separate. So you will have four little chunks. This is why it's important to label it before you start cutting to make sure that everything is pointed the right direction, that you can have them in the right order. You know, what is top, what is bottom. It will be important. And once I have them all cut apart, I'm gonna get a new piece of paper 
I'm just going to draw a guideline and I'm going to make it a T offset onto the one side. This becomes center front. I don't want you to worry about labeling anything else. And I'm going to go get a different pen for real. go. The only reason we make it a T is just so we can keep things square. We want the center front to be on the same orientation as our piece that we cut off. So if your piece is going this way, make sure your center front is over here. If your piece is going this way, make sure your center front lines up with your center front. So we're going to be putting pieces in here. Okay, the first piece that we are going to do is we're going to take A and we're going to line A up right in this along the center front, right along our guideline, and we're going to tape it in place. Be conservative with your tape you're going to have to fold every single one of these lines and they don't always like tape. So don't use ginormous pieces. Try to be as small as you can. Now, remember when we did the pleats on the bottom of the shirt waist sleeve, we had to decide how much fabric we were taking out altogether. We need to do that as well. If we are doing a quarter inch pleat, then how much space do we need on either side of the fold? We need a quarter inch on both sides. So right from the edge of piece A, you are gonna measure a quarter of an inch and this becomes a fold line, so I would just draw it dotted. And then you're gonna draw another line a quarter of an inch beyond that. And it can be a solid line. Then right along this solid line down here at the cross, you're gonna put in piece B. You're going to repeat that procedure between B and C, and you're going to repeat that procedure between C and D. Make sure you use your guidelines, keep things square. That will be really important in the construction aspect. For some reason, when I'm doing this, the steep upward curve to the shoulder always catches me off guard and my guidelines are never long enough. So I've learned to just draw them pretty long. Then C would come in here. Then I would repeat. One last time, put in D. And you've just built your piece. Now, obviously we have to true up a neckline. We have to true up a shoulder seam. We have to seam allowance this. 
but none of that can happen until you've folded these pleats in, tucks in. If they were a knife pleat, you'd fold them all the same direction. We can fold them all the same direction because we started at the center front and we're not having a full folded out piece. If you want them all going one direction across the body, you would need to not have a fold in the center piece. You'd have to build out the left side of the bodice as well, or the right side of the bodice because I'm looking at a mirror. But in order to complete this neck seam and complete this, we need to fold these pleats so it's back the size of the original shape. Now, these are not darts, these are tucks, which means the excess folded fabric is on the outside visible plane of the fabric. Okay, so I fold them to the outside right along that dotted line. And then I decide which way my pleat is gonna be laying or my tuck is gonna be laying. And I want them to lay away from the center core of the body. So then I would have that line line back up over there. Does that make sense? Then I would do the same thing with this one. Same thing with this one. This feels more like origami than pattern development, and I understand that. But sometimes that's just how it works. Okay, now with my ruler, I would just draw my shoulder seam, just so I know where it is. I would draw my neck seam across this pleat just so I know where that is. I would seam allowance the bottom, the arm's eye, the shoulder, the neck. I would not seam allowance my center front because I want it to match my aesthetic, which has nothing in the center front because it's offset. Then with my pleats folded, I'm gonna cut this out. And that's gonna give me the correct seam allowance top and bottom as we're working on these curves and angles. It's gonna be strange. I am fully aware of that. not poops and sometimes you think you're all smart and you cut off your seam allowance when you're supposed to be seam allowancing and that's okay you just retape the sucker together and start over the beauty of tape sometimes you think you're all that and a bag of chips and it turns out you're not really Okay, once you have it seam allowanced, then you unfold your peas. You can see how my seam allowances up at the top are a crazy collection of duck bills and inset points. It's just crazy business up there. Can you see that? Now, if you cut this with your pleats, or your tucks folded the opposite direction, you get totally different seam allowance. And then if in the construction st stage, you wanna change direction, you don't have enough seam allowance to be able to complete that. So it's really important that you fold them the correct direction before you cut. Then this would be your piece. This would be the bodice yoke.
this line where we cut it off right here would be a notch, right here would be a notch, right here would be a notch, and right here would be a notch. Those notches will match the notches that you put down here once the tucks are complete. So here, 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 and here are your notch lines when it's folded. You see how it fits back in the original space? And there you go. You've made a yoke and you've done pleats, tucks.